I don't know what I'm speaking about. Does anybody have a topic that I can speak on? <laughs> Beg your pardon? Come on, somebody, give me a topic. Chinese food. Oh, Chinese food. <laughs> what do you want to know about Chinese food? You want to know why it is so cheap in Britain? Yeah? It's the fault of the British public. Why Chinese food and Indian food is so cheap in Britain? It's because we demand rubbish, we get rubbish. Okay? And that's why it's so cheap and then we have this fixation in our minds that it always has to be cheap. It's because we don't believe in quality. You got me started off, sir? So, first and foremost, will everybody listening to me please feel British? Most importantly, feel British, be British, buy British. Except if you're buying from Omar, buy Spanish. All right? Because Britain doesn't do olive oil, but we do better than olive oil. We do rapeseed oil. We have the best oil in the world. We do fantastic, organic, cold-pressed, extra virgin rapeseed oil. And if you buy rapeseed oil, our farmers stay in business for longer. Okay? That's the most important thing. So please believe in Britain. And what can I speak about? You said Chinese food. Yes. Beg your pardon? I don't know what Balti means, sir. I'm an Indian. I don't understand Balti. I don't understand Balti, don't understand Fal, don't understand Tindalu, don't understand Madras. They're all cities for me. So, unfortunately, as an Indian, I don't understand the Indian food that's cooked in Britain, unfortunately. But I do understand one thing, that we live in this fabulous nation and we don't respect it enough. And it has been a great pleasure for us to do this series, if anybody's been watching. And... Uh, I've always wanted to publicize our little, little suppliers all over the country. So people who put so much effort into produce, and then we don't appreciate them enough. And I think the series has been beautifully successful simply because it brings out the best in British culture and British food. But having said that, the question was Chinese food, and I'm going to talk about Chinese food to you, sir. So just as Indian food in this country, we have 10,000 Indian restaurants in Britain and about 7,000 Chinese restaurants. And there's Thai food growing, there's Vietnamese food growing. Shall we say tapas is growing as well? Yeah, because you're starting a revolution, isn't it? But it's growing anyway. The, the issue here we have got is that when foreigners come here to start their cuisine, they first presume that the British public is not ready for their food. That's the first presumption that people have. And it's that presumption that drives a very different kind of cuisine, which is not authentic to the style they are used to. So if you walk into a Chinese restaurant kitchen, the family eats after people live, and they're eating something totally different to what you are being fed. In an Indian restaurant, the staff don't eat the food that is cooked for them, for the public. They eat something totally different. Because that's the way they eat their food, and the restaurant serves completely different food. But the biggest issue we have got is over the years to try and alleviate the cuisine and make it popular, they've always undersold products. Now, if I buy British, then I pay nearly twice as much as buying chicken from Thailand or Brazil or from some remote part of this world. You don't know where your chicken came from. You don't know where it was farmed. You don't know what it was farmed with. And you're just buying chicken because you're buying cheap. So that's, that's what happens to the cuisine. And then cuisine gets doctors, it gets oversweet, then you get things like balti coming up, okay? Now to explain the word balti is the biggest joke on the British public by some North Indians. Okay, as you know, we Indians and Asians don't use paper to wipe our bums, we wash them. Okay, because we find washing is more hygienic, so we use water. The, little vessel that is used to carry to the toilet is called a balti. <laughs> All right? And the balti is filled with washer to wash your bum. So when you fancy eating a balti, sir, to me, it's a joke. I burst out laughing because you guys all think it's fantastic food, but the Indians are having a great laugh at your expense. And they've had a laugh at your expense for many, many years. The other thing is, that there was a certain region called Baltistan in the, Khyber, in the Khyber Pass region of Afghanistan, between Afghanistan and India. Of course, India then, now Pakistan. 
and the Baltis were the scourge of the British army because they would swoop in from the mountains, pillage and plunder, wreck the convoys and disappear back. They are still doing it. We are fighting a losing battle. We don't realize we are fighting a losing battle, but they are still doing it. And the Baltis could never cook because they were always on the run from the army. They were always on the run. So they shot wild animals and just roasted them or spit roasted them and ate them. So how could they have farmed tomatoes? A Balti sauce is brimming with tomatoes. Green peppers. 15,000 feet above sea level, you cannot grow green peppers. You cannot even grow tomatoes. <coughs> Forget growing the fenugreek. You can't grow any damn thing over there. So, I don't understand Balti cuisine, I'm sorry. But I do understand that you've been all had and taken for a jolly good ride for many, many years. Keep enjoying the food. Keep enjoying everything. But please don't forget the important message. British is best. Ask where the chicken came from. Ask where the lamb came from. Ask where your beef came from. Ask where your pork came from. Please visit our local farms. See how hard our people work. And then we'll appreciate very recently, as you may or may not know, you may not be aware, but they were trying to Americanize pork farming in this country. And there was a, <clears throat> there was a proposition to build a pork intensive farm in Northumberland to start with. 15,000 pigs on one farm. The sow has no place to move. When she delivers, she just plonks herself flat on the floor and she can't budge. It's disgusting, it's disgraceful. Of course, I was one of them who put in a very, very strong petition. Thankfully, some of our MEPs got some common sense in them and they stopped it from happening in Britain. So please, if you believe in British, buy British. I'll give you one more example. Pork in general, because the pig is a fabulous creature. But did you know that since the end of the Second World War, nine classic British breeds have gone extinct? Did you know that, people? You didn't know that because it's your fault you didn't buy them. Okay? It's our fault. If we buy from the local farmer, tell him to give me the English lop or the British lop. Everyone's hooked on Gloucester black spot. But we have some fabulous breeds. At the moment, in the restaurant, we are selling Oxford Sandy black. Have you heard of Oxford Sandy black? It's a gorgeous looking creature. The farmer puts in so much effort and nobody wants to buy. So what happens is we get 200 sows in the country, 300 sows in the country. The English lop is literally going extinct. And if we buy more, the farmer is obliged to breed more. The, land, the middle white, <clears throat> one of the best breeds of pigs in Britain, <coughs> is nearly extinct. There are only a dozen farmers in the whole country breeding it. So please, that's my message. I'm not speaking much about Chinese food or Omar's obsession with tapas. But my dear sir, tapas is not only Spanish. It came from the Persians. All right? It came from the Persians. The word, the word is Spanish, but the Portuguese also use the word tapas. You know that. They use the word tapas for little, little snacks. And the Persians were the great ones for that. In the afternoon and the early evenings, you got a myriad thing. That's where metze came from. And the word, of course, every country adopts a word. But they are all meant for little things and little tastes to titillate your palate and you enjoy good food. And that's what it's all about on the streets of India. If you go, you will eat tapas. But it's actually chaat, what we call, lick. Finger licking food. And you pick up little, little pieces and keep eating all through the day. Right, Mr. Omar? And do you know the Spanish omelette is Persian? You didn't know that either, did you, Mr. Omar? <laughs> anyway, folks, enjoy yourselves. Have a great day and see you soon.